Hi again everyone, welcome back. Please like and subscribe. Let's keep the channel growing. This section is going to be on media and objects. Now, as I've said here, I think this can be joined with principles of web design. However, if you don't wish to join it, that's perfectly fine. Once you cover some or most of these topics, you should be fine. So for this one, we have position, color, contrast, size, and appropriateness. The first one we have is position. So is the positioning of objects and media on the website good? Let's go back to Amazon again. I think it's good because, yes, the positioning is good, and I think it's good because, no, the positioning is not good, and I think it's not good because, and you list all the reasons why you think it's good, reasons why you think it's not good. I think Amazon is okay. It could be better. It's very, very cluttered, right? Could be better, but in the grand scheme of things, the amount of things that Amazon sells, this is pretty good, and the amount of things that I've searched for, this is a very nicely curated list. Now, look at all of this. This is all stuff I've looked at before. Not exactly these items, but these categories at least. Phones. Look, I've even looked for deodorant on here. I've looked for watches. I've looked for print, um, ink for printers, phone cases, TVs, um, uh, bonding agents, bags, everything on here. And I think it's pretty well laid out. The positioning is pretty okay. Not the best in the world, but it does separate it quite logically. So I can see the obvious gaps between things and everything is laid out nicely on a page. It's, it's all lined up. None of it is stretching over onto another page. Um, they have the arrows at each end so I can keep scrolling through stuff I want for this category again. Next, we have color and contrast. And remember that these are going to be like subheadings and maybe you can have this in bold and then all of this stuff you type underneath it. So is the color or are the colors used in a way which complements the website and the general content of the website? Or is it random and messy looking, right? You speak about that. Some websites use random and messy looking to make things stand out, which is a good thing for them. In some cases, it's not. And do the colors contrast in a way which makes it easy to see the content and read the text? Going back to Amazon, so this is how they've used their color scheme. Typically, you have loads of white space and we have items in a bubble. And the text is generally easy to read. At the top here in the navigation bar, it's very, very easy to read because they have the navigation bar as a that looks like a dark blue, a dark purple, or close to black. And the text itself is white, so the colors here are used quite well. Skip to main contents. Let's go back to home page again. Um, the colors on here, not the most eye-catching, but they do look okay. When we cycle through, we can see that the colors of the background whilst I cycle through. It changes to try and match the thing it's talking about. Next, we're gonna have size and is the size of the content on the website a sensible size? So for example, does this section take up the entire page or is it sensibly enough so I can have other sections or other categories next to it, right? Next, uh, we have is the text too small, too large or a good size? I think on Amazon it's a good size. This is easily read. I should be wearing glasses. My eyes are really bad, but I can read the text here quite well. Things stand out. So things that should stand out are in bold, right? I don't need to know the name of this specific laptop until I go over to pick up from where you left off section, right? I don't need to know, know the name of this exact phone and the Nokia G55 G smartphone until I go to keep shopping for it. So maybe this is stuff in my basket, stuff I've clicked like on. So it gives me the main headings first in the form of text. And then when I drill into that section, it shows me the extra information. So maybe that's how you should describe it. Um, where are the images too small, too large, or the right size? Again, more or less the same thing. The images are quite decent because the fact that I can have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine images on one single line is quite good. And they've done it in a way which I can differentiate. I, I can look at these easily and differentiate or see that these are slightly different bags. Even though, even though they're all bags, they're all travel bags, they're all travel luggage type things, I can differentiate the types because the images are quite clear. I can click um, on the arrow and see more images on a single line as well. So the images are a good size. For your website, if you think they are not a good size, you say that. If you think they're a good size, say that. And then you still explain why. I don't think it's a good size. And then you're going to say, I don't think it's a good size because uh, of these reasons. Finally, we're going to have appropriateness. Now, this could mean two things. But because we're dealing with media and objects, it might be a good idea to just speak on both of them, right? 
Uh, the first one could be, is it appropriate for the audience and the general type of website it is? So, on Amazon, they have items about things being sold. On IG, and they might have things about games, right? Um, on YouTube, they might have general videos. It depends on the type of website it is. That's the content that they should have on it. Imagine Amazon was all about games, and then randomly you see a picture or a video on some random car race that was done in 2019, right? The, the content is not appropriate for the website. It's not a game. It's nothing to do with games, but it just has this random content on there. Next, we have, uh, yeah, as I said here, gaming websites should have images, videos, text about games. Websites like Amazon, which is an e-commerce website, should have images, videos about things being sold. It could also mean, is the content lewd or rude? So please make sure you do not choose any website with rude content, with overly rude gestures, with anything with, I'm, I'm going to say this loosely, with, with racism, unless that's the area that you want to mention. So your two websites should be about some general content that are similar, right? You don't want to be choosing websites that are not suitable for people your age 100%. Please, please, please do not do that. So that's what appropriateness means. Is the content on the website appropriate for the audience, right? So if you're looking at kids' websites, would it make sense for a, a, a child website, kids between the age of, let's say, 10 and 14, to be reading on particle physics? Or if it's going to be a child website on learning, maybe you have more videos explaining concepts than you do written papers on how particle physics works, 